Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and welcome to Knife AQ. This is episode 126 and it's the series where I get to answer all of your questions, whether they're sharp or dull. This week, a couple of cool topics. We're talking about some knives that are lightweight, but also still manage to feel overbuilt, as well as talking about one of the best survival tools ever created. Let's check them out. All right, if you're new to this series, what we do is we answer your questions, as mentioned in the, uh, the cold open there. Uh, but if you have a question that you would like to have featured in a future episode, to have a chance at that happening, what you gotta do is just leave it in the comments section below this video. We'll check them out, maybe it'll get picked. First question today comes from the Weekend Yogurt. Interesting. Uh, hey, DCA and Thomas. You didn't prepare an answer for this, did you? No. If you were marooned on a desert island, what budget, as in sub $50 knife, would you bring and why? Sure. Uh, this is kind of going to dovetail into some things that I've talked about a bit before, um, but I think it's a point always kind of worth bringing up again. Uh, and it's just a fun thing to kind of think about. First of all, etymolo etymologically speaking, the desert island, because this question has come up before too, is not actually what we think of as a desert in terms of lack of rainfall. Uh, it's actually just a shortening of the term deserted island. So, you know, the, the typical, you know, in our head view is when we think the desert island is actually like tropical feeling, right? But anyway, so that, that's kind of the environment, not a uh, lack of rainfall type of desert. Um, in that scenario, and in fact, in just about any scenario, if you are granted with this question, I have the chance to like tailor pick a knife for a specific environment. But if you were to take one tool that could cover a broad range of environments to be your, you know, one budget thing, it's gotta be a machete. It's gotta be, it, it doesn't have to be, but it could be a 12 inch machete. The, uh, there's a sentiment out there uh, amongst some circles that I've heard oft repeated and I happen to, to agree with it. A 12 inch machete is hard to beat as a one tool option pretty much anywhere. Caveat with that is you want a machete that could handle some light chopping, light to, to medium duty chopping even. Something like this Ontario machete right here. This is the 12 inch, uh, let me get their name right. This is the traditional cutlass camp and trail machete, in fact, but it's the uh, shorter version essentially of the 18 inch uh, issued a machete in the armed forces here in the United States, Army, I believe. Um, it's fantastic. You can do so many things with a machete and the 12 inch size can flex into smaller rolls quite easily. You know, if, if you're someone who's been swinging an 18 inch or longer machete all your life, you're gonna be able to do all kinds of small stuff with it. But if you're less experienced, like, you know, as much experience as I have going out and playing around in the woods with knives, a 12 inch machete is still going to be easier to control for the small stuff. You can choke up, you can do fine carving stuff, you can slash through vegetation with it. And the tough carbon steel of this Ontario is tough enough, as mentioned, and thick enough that you can chop with it. You can do an approximation of a hatchet with this. You can split wood with it. You can baton with it. Will other things do those things better? Yes, but if you got one thing, something like this is going to do so much. This is like 26 bucks. It doesn't come with a sheath. You will need to, to purchase that as well, but combined, you're still less than $50. This one right here is like 26. There's two ways you can go about it. You can go with this, or you can go with the versions of this that have a D ring on it. These are a couple bucks less. They started like $23, I think for the green handle one, the black one's 25. I'm not sure why they're a different price, but who knows. Neither of them are perfect out of the box, but I would say the D ring version will require a little bit less attention. And for me, I don't mind doing that, especially for a tool at that price with the, the bones you're getting. Yeah, it'd be nicer not to. And yeah, there are nicer, more ready to go things out of the box in this price range, but none that inspire the same amount of confidence and durability that I get when I pick one of these up. 
the handle on the D-ring machete is much nicer to hold out of the box than the non-D-ring version, but the ring can interfere with some grips. Very easy to cut this ring off though. You can slice it right here and right here. I'd leave the little tab uh, at the back to give you some retention on a swing. And then the edges do come to a sharp apex here at the tip, but the grind thickens up. It's more durable. You may want to you know, tweak that, pay some attention to it. And I probably would wind up doing that myself too. Superb, superb choice here. If you were to go with the non D ring version, as you can see here, the handles are not flush with the tang. Uh, so out of the box, these are a bit blockier feeling. There's the potential for hot spots. The D-ring versions have a little bit of a divot scooped out of the middle here. So even without any kind of mods there, it feels a little bit better. But the advantage of this, these pieces are injection molded and they are solid. They're not like hollowed out in the middle. So you could shape this to perfectly fit your hand. And there's something to be said for that too. Like I said, there's nicer things, more ready to go out of the box, but I just, I love the feeling of confidence I get from these Ontario machetes. That's, that's my sub $50 knife. If money was no object, I'd still pick a 12 inch machete, quite honestly, but I would probably go with this Topps machete. This is their 10 inch version, which is still a 12 inch machete, I would argue. And I'll hold it up next to the Ontario 12 inch machete there to show you why. Overall length is pretty much the same. It's a tiny bit shorter but they've essentially just given more length over to the handle rather than sharpened edge. And yeah, you're giving up some sharpened edge there, but the balance of this and the utility of it in those choked up grips is much more comfortable for the smaller things you're gonna be doing. If you need to carve, whittle, do any of that sort of thing, but you've still got the same kind of reach that you need for the heavier hits. 1095 carbon steel on these, really, really nicely finished doesn't need any tweaking right out of the box, at least not for me. And the sheath on it is pretty robust too. I got, comes with a nice little plastic baggie there. A couple of different pockets on the front, very sturdy. You know, it's a basic style, but there's a reason so many things come with sheaths like this is they're fairly economical and they just freaking work. It's like 125 bucks, 124 bucks uh, for this machete right now. Now, if, you're gonna insist it has to be a knife and not a machete. Uh, I've got some options there too, although I would much prefer the, uh, the machete in this case. Um, the Cold Steel SRK is like a go-to budget, quote unquote, survival knife. Uh, yeah, it does tactical and other stuff too, but for about 43, 44 bucks for this version right here, you've got six inch blade with SK5 carbon steel, nice and tough hollow ground, a little bit on the thicker side, and then it's like 3 16ths of an inch. You can get it with a, how is that more like 5 30 seconds? I, I, I can't trust my eyes anymore. They're failing me recently. Shall we? Okay. Yeah, it's, it's like 3 16ths of an inch, that's cool. Uh, so I was right the first time. You can get it a little bit thinner with a saber height flat grind as opposed to the saber height hollow grind on this version right here. And that's the SRK compact with the five inch blade. Either one of those would be a pretty good choice. The sheath on them is nice and solid. Injection molded, clicks in like Kydex. And then you've got an extra snap retention loop there as well. That is one option you could go with. Um, the other one, it, it, at first I was like, yeah, that's the one. But then I started to, you know, equivocate a little bit. I started to consider maybe I might go for something like the Condor Pterosaur as well. This could be a really good option. It doesn't have the same kind of quote unquote survival knife vibes as the SRK, but it is a full tang knife. You've got a Scandi grind here, just over four inches on the blade, just under 50 bucks. And it has a more comfortable handle for actual use, I would say. Rubber is nice. It can definitely help you from losing your grip, but if you're spending a lot of time using this tool, Rubber can sometimes grip too much. It can actually potentially cause blisters depending on what you're doing. The hard plastic of this pterosaur is going to be much more accommodating for that sort of thing. Plus you can get it in orange, which is nice and visible too. And you've got a very low profile sheath, fairly lightweight, something fell over there, fairly lightweight in terms of uh, what you're carrying too here with a full tank knife. What are we dealing with? Uh, you know, about seven ounces, not too bad. Not, a, not an ultralight thing by any stretch of the imagination, but not too bad. And if it has to be a folder, 
Is there anything more iconic for this sort of use than the Ontario Rat 1? I don't think so. Solid, plenty of length for big grips, plenty of strength with full steel liners, versatile drop point blade shape, 3.6 inches or thereabouts. Uh, starting around the $30 mark, uh, a little bit above for some OS8 versions, this Micarta and D2 bladed versions of knife center exclusive, just under 50 bucks as well. All of them I think would be some pretty good choices. Hope that helps. All right, next question comes from Donald Ivy. Dave, I need a large heavy duty work knife around four inches or so. Is there a lightweight knife that meets these qualifications under $200? Greatly appreciate your insights on the FAQ. All right, so this one was, I had fun kind of chewing this over because the, the thought, like it, it's almost one of those things where it's like two opposing forces and you have to find the middle ground there. Heavy duty usually connotes something like overbuilt feeling like let's say the ZT308, which is outside your budget. I'll grant you this is about a seven ounce knife in the hand. Could be worse. There's like 10 ounce knives out there all over the place, but something like this isn't terrible to carry, but doesn't quite give me the, you know, a lightweight feel. The opposite end of the spectrum, you've got stuff like the Spyderco Stretch 2XL. This thing's like under three ounces. I mean, what's, what's the spec we have over here on the website? Um, 2.7 ounces for this nearly four inch VG10 blade. And it's, it's more of a big easy knife as opposed to a big heavy duty knife. Yeah, it's not, I'm not worried about it breaking, but it doesn't give that feeling of heavy dutiness. And this was kind of a hard nut to crack for me mentally um, until I stumbled on, or I finally arrived at the knife that I think encapsulated my thoughts on it. And from there it was like, oh yeah, well duh, of course, I should have thought of that right from the get go. And I kind of opened up the rest of my uh, suggestions here for you that I'll go over. And that is the Cold Steel Voyager. Well under your price point, this is an $85 knife. Injection molded handle, keeps the weight down, but you have the triad lock from Cold Steel, a very durable spin-off of the lockback, more durable, more long lasting than most typical lock, lockbacks. And there's several blade versions, uh, blade variations out there, but I'd probably say the, the drop point feels the most heavy duty to me. Uh, the Tonto coming in a close second, but you're dealing with a hollow ground section uh, on the back and the uh, higher flat grind on this should be a bit more durable. And you've got a more robust tip than the full flat ground clip point versions as well. Four inch blade, Aus 10 steel, nice heavy working finish going on here with that stone wash. And it gives you that feeling of heavy duty of overbuilt without so much weight. This is a 5.1 ounce knife on this. And I'd, I actually didn't measure like the, uh, the Tonto version, but I think this knife has more steel uh, in the blade than any of the other versions when you take the grind into account. So those might be 0.1 of an ounce less or something. This is gonna work great. It's got two pocket clips. If you wanna use it on the left side, it has another pocket clip for you. Triad lock is perfectly ambidextrous. The thumb studs technically are reversible, but there's no need, they both work. Even though one side is a little bit shorter, they both are easy to use fantastic beater of a knife that doesn't cost a ton of money and is not gonna weigh your pockets down. Um, if you want nicer materials, you could look at something like the Recon 1. Here is the Atanto version of it. We've got G10 and S35 VN, but this one is coming in about five and a half ounces. And for me, because you didn't mention an actual weight um, that you, were, you wanted to stay under or what your actual kind of heavy duty uses were, I gotta draw the line somewhere. So just in my head, I'm thinking five ounces is that nice sweet spot. So five, five and a half here, still not bad, but it's starting to, you know, it feels a little bit more, take that under advisement. Uh, the next one I think that really works well is the Hogue EX-03. There, there's a three and a half and a four inch version. Here is the three and a half inch version. I do did have uh, one of the four inch versions on the shelf right now, uh, the, the four, is 160, 170 bucks for that one. 154 CM blade, polymer handles, button lock with a safety switch here. And this also, like the, the Voyager, has a feeling of hard use to it, despite not being crazy heavy. It's like 4.9 ounces for the, uh, the four inch version and a little bit less for the three and a half. I have uh, the aluminum version of this knife in the four inch right here. Uh, that is coming in about 5.6 ounces, if I'm remembering right. 
So same blade shape, same steel, same handle shape, but in this case, you know, the aluminum construction. I kind of prefer the aluminum because in hand it's balanced a little better than the injection molded versions are. So if that extra 0.6 of an ounce doesn't matter to you, this could be also a very good choice. The blade is robust feeling, but with the high flat grind, it's efficient enough for most daily uses. The 154CM, it's not gonna set the world on fire with your edge retention, but it's going to be plenty, plenty capable for sure. And if that uh, extra 0.6 ounces is still okay, this all comes in right under 200 bucks. Uh, the next one is something that uh, may not be initially as obvious, but I think it still applies, and that is certain versions of the Spyderco Endura, such as this one with the wave-shaped opener, the licensed Emerson Wave. It comes with a flat ground saber grind right here, and there's also a version with the non-waved uh, spine that also has a saber ground version, as opposed to the full flat grind that most of them come with these days. This one isn't as initially obvious as a heavy duty contender, but this really is a knife that could withstand quite a bit of hard use, I think. Uh, $106 for this VG10 bladed knife right here. Perfectly ambidextrous, you got four positions for the pocket clip, means you can carry it anywhere you want. Plenty of grip from the injection molding, ambidextrous usage for the opening and for the or, uh, mid mounted lockback, and fast to get out in a uh, quick environment if you're needing to cut something um, as efficiently as you can, because this might be a job situation. You can hook that uh, wave onto the hem of your pocket as you, op as you pull the knife from the pocket and it'll be ready to go right away. The lockback on these is strong. You've got full length steel liners underneath the, uh, the FRN here to give it plenty of rigidity. And the saber ground profile of these versions is gonna be a little bit more stout than the full flat grinds that would be very similar to what you would see on this Stretch XL right here. Not a bad option, really. Like I, not an obvious one, but one I think definitely works. And then just because, I have three more things here, but these will have a little asterisk next to them um, because how, how heavy duty is heavy duty is I think a valid question. Uh, one that we're not quite gonna answer here today, but if your, your heavy duty is a little maybe lesser than other, some other people's heavy duty, some of these liner lock versions could work, uh, knives that I'm about to show you could be good choices too. There is some debate as to whether, you know, there's any liner lock that could be considered a heavy duty knife. Personally, I would honestly trust the triad lock or a lockback more than a, a liner lock for those sort of things. Not that I would would feel bad about having a liner lock, but on the spectrum of things, it's it's worth mentioning. Uh, first off, another Spyderco. The Resilience Lightweight. $122 or so right now, just under that. 4.2 inches of S35VN. Little bit stouter than some of Spyderco's full flat grind, full flat ground knives but definitely this one it goes a little bit t more towards the slicing aspect of things, but I still think you have a pretty robust feeling blade, generally speaking, and full length non-inset steel liners underneath the FRN handles. These knives feel exceptionally solid. If you've ever held one of these or one of the Tenacious models, which is a little bit smaller, you'll know what I'm talking about. Could be another really good option. You've got S35 on this too, which is a, Mm, yeah, but a better steel than anything we've looked at so far, in, uh, except for the Recon 1 in terms of edge retention, at least, anyway. Uh, next up, another caveat, you know, what's hard use? The Civivi Governor could be an interesting option. The blade here is not quite as robust feeling. You've got a hollow grind and a fairly acute point, but again, you've got a nice, solid feeling knife. 3.86 inches on the blade length there. Washers in the pivot on this knife, as opposed to ball bearings. In fact, everything we've looked at so far is running on washers. If I think heavy duty, I might think dirty situations. I want that extra kind of resistance against grit that uh, a washer would provide as opposed to a ball bearing. Could be a good option, might not quite be heavy duty enough. Certainly doesn't inspire the same kind of overbuilt feeling as something like that Cold Steel Voyager up at front, but just something to look at too, because I think it's a nice knife and it's kind of buried a little bit in Civivi's lineup. Uh, one more, and this is this gets two asterisks, because this knife also does have ball bearings, which I just mentioned I didn't necessarily want for this sort of thing. But the Bestech Swordfish, you can get it 
for like $52 with a D2 blade or you can get S35VN for about 90 on these Knife Center exclusive versions right here. And the reason this, uh, I, I still wanted to show this is the feeling in the hand here. It has a more robust feel. You've got G10, enough girth and enough contouring that it really locks in quite nicely. And you've got a four inch S35VN blade. It's good stuff, I do declare. Check those out, let me know what you think. Hope that helps. And if you folks have other suggestions on a heavy duty, lightweight knife, would love to hear it because I feel like I'm just scratching the surface here. As I was trying to pull some examples for, for some other things, I was discovering some other things that would, would fit kind of nicely. I still stand by the Hogue and the Cold Steel and the Endura with the Saber Grind though as kind of my top three picks for this sort of thing. They should serve you quite well. I am stunned you didn't plug pocket fix blade. Well, four inch pocket fix blade is kind of hard to pull off. Yeah, you could do it. One could do it. And this, this also could get in, like you could have a Mora super easy. You know, get a, get a Mora companion, fairly lightweight. Clips outside the belt quite nicely. And it applies because Mora is always the answer. Like Miata. Like Miata. There's, we'll get into this someday. There's, there's some questions where it's really hard not to go to like three default answers because they do everything so well. That's another show. Now we come to the lightning round for today. First questions from Josh H. Uh, hey DCA, what's the best knife for cutting weeds? I figured you could benefit from buying one since you get stuck in the weeds so often. Like the last question? Machete. Machete. That'll do it. Machete. Uh, next question comes from, you are probably correct with an exclamation point. Uh, in general, what would you choose? Leatherman or Victorinox? Um, so I don't really have brand loyalty between the two. I think they're both great companies, but it's more, for me, a multi-tool is like, what am I gonna need? Uh, for whatever it is I'm doing when I'm you know, putting that multi-tool in my belt or on my pocket, on my belt or in my pocket. There we go, nailed it. Um, and to me, it boils down to one question. Do I feel like I'm going to need pliers? Then I'm probably gonna wind up with a Leatherman. I don't own any of uh, Victorinox's Swiss tools as good as they are. I just default to Leatherman. If I don't feel the need for pliers in a given situation, I'm probably gonna wind up for a Victorinox. Uh, but if we're talking about truly like most generally though, I, I, I gotta do it. I gotta pull it out from my belt. I carry the Leatherman Juice CS4 every day these days because it is the quintessential blend of the Leatherman style multi-tool and the kind of tool density and form factor size of a Swiss Army knife. And it's really a shame they don't make these anymore. It's kind of a flawed tool in ways. It has some quirks that, you know, aren't great, um, that, that aren't, uh, that, that could be done better. But to me, nothing really blends the Swiss Army knife world and the, uh, the plier Leatherman style multi-tool world quite like the juice does. Lightly modified, I added a little file there on the side, which is nice. And yes, I do know about the uh, SOG Power Pine. That feels like something else entirely too. Well, now we come to our final question for the day which is of course our most serious question of the day, which comes today from Rob R. Hey David, I'm curious to know if you like lettuce and tomatoes on your heroes. I do not. I feel it takes away from the meat and cheese, which everyone knows are the stars of the sandwich. This has nothing to do with knives. You could cut the tomatoes with a knife. One could, one could cut the sandwich in half. Yes. This is quasi knife related. Um, I had to do some, some research on this because I was about to, I'm still gonna give the answer I was gonna give, but I didn't realize the, the hero spelled this way as opposed to gyro, which is pronounced gyro. That is a specific type of sandwich, one that I've never had the pleasure of ingesting. But lettuce and tomatoes are absolutely essential because it is two parts of the holy trinity of the bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich, which I will die on this hill is the best sandwich. Quite. When you don't consider the bacon, bacon, bacon sandwich. No, like that's just so wrong. The lettuce and the, adds a little bit of crunch, the tomato, the acidity to cut the fat of the bacon, a little bit of mayo and pepper, some toasted white bread. Can't be good white bread. It has to be, you know, at best, decent store-bought sliced bread. Can't be good white bread. 
one of the best culinary inventions ever and absolutely the best sandwich ever. So you gotta have your lettuce and tomato. That's all we've got for today. Let me know what you thought of the comments or the, <laughs> the questions down below. Let me know your desert island knives. Let me know your lightweight, heavy duty knives. Let me know your favorite sandwich. And I'll tell you why you're wrong if it isn't BLT. That's all we've got. If you wanna get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description below. Those will take you to knifecenter.com. And of course, while you're over there, don't forget about our Knife Rewards program because you're buying these knives, aren't you? Don't you wanna earn some free money to spend on your next ones? I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center and that's Thomas behind the camera. We're signing off. See you next time. And the hot dog debate begins. Hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs>